Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. I actually have a lot in common with our next of guest. Of course. He's from a big family. I'm from a big family. And it just happens to be one of the most famous musical families of all times, the legendary Jacksons. Mm. Hello. I was so excited to sit down <coughs> with the one, the only, Tito Jackson. Tito, yes. oh, I'm so excited. It is such an honor to have you here. The Jacksons has played in the Braxton's house for 879 years, and we are still <laughs> listening to it. You guys are one of the most iconic families in the world, period. It's just uh, more than an honor and pleasure, I have to say again, but how does it feel to know that you and your family have had so much impact on the world? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank all the people all over the world that supported the brothers and myself and Janet and the family. Uh, thanks for your love and support. You know, uh, We've always said that it's the fans that make the artists. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to work, we make music, and we do all these other things, but it's actually the fans who love it and buy it and encourage us to continue to do that. Yes. So it, it's, it's a great feeling. And I'm still enjoying show business after all these years. It's I'm sure that you guys have so many memories, but do you have anyone that stands out in particular, especially when you guys were younger? Well, there's a few, yeah. Um, I remember the very first time we went to the UK mm -hmm. and we had something like 10,000 screaming fans to greet us <laughs> at the airport. And uh, I got lost in the airport and uh, a thousand fans chasing me, pulling everywhere. And oh my gosh. It, it was crazy, wow. it, it was crazy, that's one of them. I have quite a few. Of course, uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame is oh another one. Oh my gosh, one. yes, definitely. Uh, we were inducted along with the BGs mm -hmm. and uh, also the Walk of Fame and things like yes, that. Yes, and we're gonna talk more about that too. But now let's talk about the international tour you're still on with your brothers. Yes. That's going on right now. Yes. So how do you enjoy still performing? Well, like I said, it's the fans. They want to hear that music and they're so excited and they bring that whole energy level up. Even if you're not, not feeling too well of entertaining today once you hit that stage and you hear that crowd roar and the fans just bring it all back to life Oof. well speaking of impact let's talk about your little brother michael for just a moment um we all miss him terribly but who was he to you just michael because sometimes people ask me that about tony braxton so i i, I get it yeah so how was it you as just my little brother michael he was my little brother michael and uh that's the way we see him mm. and that's the way we've always seen him and that's the way he, we will always probably see him mm -hmm. of course he had tremendous talent and uh we recognize that but First of all, he's our brother. Yes, definitely. Before anything. Definitely. And we've always told each other, you know, when, we not, when we're not having fun, it comes to a point where we're not acting like brothers. Yes. It's time to hang it up, give it up. Mm, I you know. agree. I agree. Family before fame. I'm all the way there. Yeah. But uh, before we get into your new single, let's talk about uh, Charles Barkley. Uh -huh. And you've addressed him already, but he said, if you weren't in the Jackson Five, would you really miss him? Talk to us about how you felt about that statement. Well, it hurt. like I said, I've always been a very big fan of Charles Barkley. He's one of my favorite NBA players from back in the old school days, ever since he was playing with the Suns, Phoenix Suns. And uh, to hear him say that, it hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are saying, like, Mr. Barkley, well, we miss him and all these other things. I have to do my thing. Yes. You know, I had decided not to do it at one point in my life. Mm -hmm. But it was, of course, the fans, and after I heard that statement, they said, I gotta do it now, yes. because Charles Barkley's a well-known ball player, and uh, he's saying things like that, so I have to prove him wrong, or yeah. whatever. Well, I, for one, I'm glad he said it, because it led to your new single, and that we probably wouldn't have, had he not said that. Yeah, you, one probably, street. you probably wouldn't have had Tito time now. Yeah, <laughs> I have Tito time, but it's a little different. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So how does it feel for you to now be in the forefront? It feels good, you know, it's something, I was always the shy member in the band, you know, I was very quiet, and uh, my brothers talk a lot, and when you got five of us sitting in the <laughs> surrounding and the interviewer, and uh, he's asking a question, and five of them jump in, and I was just say, I'm going to be quiet, just let, let them handle it. You know. Well, it is difficult sometimes when you come from a large family to kind of get your voice and feel where you belong. You know, it's just, trust me, I know. You, I'm five of six. So, 
Uh-huh. I gotta be loud, try to get my voice. Ah. And anyway, like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with, with your new single, you're working with a, a young producer. His name is uh, Greg Pag- Pagani. P- Pagani. I want to get it yes. right. Greg Pagani. Yes. So how did you guys just merge your music together to find that sound that you well, wanted? Well, my promotion man, Hazel, Hazel Garber, is the person that introduced us. And uh, he had heard One Way Street before, and he said, okay, we're going to do this. We need a remix on it and this and that. I said, uh, hey, Suze, I really don't know anyone that can remix this record for me. Do you have any suggestions? Of course, Greg Pagani had just came off a number one record with uh, Johnny Gill, Mm -hmm. Soul of a Woman. And I listened to the record and I said, hey, this is in the same groove, same vein. You know, why not? Give him a shot at it. Wow. Ooh, I'm talking, I was happened. sweating under my arms. I, it was, <laughs> I was nervous. I, I never get nervous like that, but I was so nervous. And the single is really good. It's old and it's called One Way Street. And you guys make sure you look out for it. Mm, One yeah. Way Street from Jermaine, from, I'm sorry, Tito Jackson. It's available <laughs> on all streaming platforms. One of them, Jackson, Braxton, blah, blah, blah. If you're staying with us for the full hour, we will have more with my interview when we return. Yes. The Jacksons and the Braxtons. <laughs> We are back with Sister Circle Live. Of course, I had a talk with Tito Jackson <laughs> about the Motown days, and he was happy to go down memory lane with me. Here's more of my interview with the legendary Tito Jackson, who was just so much fun to talk to. Take a look. Hey, last month, Showtime, they premiered a documentary, Hitsville, the making of Motown, and it followed the lives of many Motown artists, of course, including the Jacksons. You can't have Motown and not include the Jacksons. What goes through your head when you see your younger self being uh, personified on screen, performing? Well, Motown was a dream for the brothers because uh, when we were growing up, learning our craft, everything was Motown. We loved Temptations, Four Tops, Stevie, and uh, we've always wanted to be on the label. Mm-hmm. And uh, when, first of all, let me back up. We were performing at the Apollo Theater, and we had a choice to either go on the Dick Cavett show or go audition for Barry Gordy. I didn't want to go to audition for Motown because I said, if we go on this international show, we could be seen by the world. Mm-hmm. Of course, the brothers always wanted to be on the Motown. So I just let, like I said, I just, okay, we'll go to Motown. Just went along with it. And I had heard that he didn't want no more kids because he had Stevie Wonder, and that was a handful, mm. working with social workers and the state and all that. Now, what he's going to do with five of us? Yes. So uh, anyway, we auditioned, and he didn't, he didn't show any, any, any expression whatsoever. He just sat there and watched everything. When the last number we played, he came over to us, and he goes, I'm gonna make your first five, four records, he said. First four records, number one. Wow. And, and we thought, how's that gonna happen? You know, he did it. Yes, you know? and then some. But the thing, <laughs> the, most, the, most, the most frightening thing of that whole time period is that after our audition, the very next day he was having a surprise party for Dinah Ross. And he had access to come to the party to perform. Mm-hmm. And at the party was Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, mm-hmm. Temptation, all the Motown staff, artists. And we're up there singing their songs to them. And they're judging us on their songs. Right. So that was very nervous for me. As, as children, yeah, on top as, of it, on top of it. I'm telling you, you guys' life is so synonymous with ours. Because when we watch American Dream, we're like, y'all had Joe, we had, y'all had Joe Jackson, we had Evelyn Braxton. So it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Somebody got to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but your family, they call you Papa T. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, talk, talk to us about, even after your dad, what life lessons do you incorporate in your life with your children and well, your grandchildren now? I, I, when I was a young man, you know, I thought my father was uh, a hard man. Mm-hmm. But n- now that I'm older yes. and I look at his direction and what he instilled in the sons and, and what's right and what's wrong and all, all those type of things, he was wrong. He was on it. Yeah. And I picked up some of those things. You know, I have uh, three sons, uh, have a little group called 3T. Yes. And the. Uh, they're good boys, you yes. know, and that's all I can ask for. That's all I wanted them to be is very respectful to the world and do what they would want to do in life. So. Well, you can't go wrong when it's all T's because my sisters and I, we're all T's. So. Oh, all yeah, right. Uh, we got the T thing yeah, going yeah, here. <laughs> this is TNT here, you guys. Okay, now, as a Jackson, I mean, you're Jackson. Uh, Walk of Fame, uh, Hall of Fame, just countless number one records. But what is the coolest thing, the coolest thing in the whole entire world about being a Jackson? 
coolest thing about being a Jackson? It's hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's not always cool. But the coolest thing about being a Jackson, I guess, would be being able to perform for the people mm -hmm. and having them to love your music and your craft. Yes. What about the people, like, say when you go to Japan or when you go to Sweden, and people that can't necessarily speak English but can recite your words back to you? Now How that, do you feel about that? That's that's very pleasing because, uh, like you said, these people don't speak a lick of English, but they can say every word on your record perfectly. Yes. I'm gonna tell you what, I don't want you to go. I want you to stay with us forever, but you guys, we gotta go. It was uh, great having this time with you. Tito Jackson, that's all nice I have to, to say. Nice to meet you, Trina. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Very nice meeting Thank you. Aw, nice to meet you, Trina. Wait a minute. Who put me on the program? <laughs> <laughs> Nice said, to nice to meet you, you Trina. He was such very a nice, nice to meet you. Oh my God. So nice. uh, it, God. Was, it was very it, Billy How Bean. was the interview, Trina? Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a living legend, you know, and I'm sitting there right. talking to Tito. You know what I mean? This is, oh, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, I'm still sweating right now. I'm like, superstar. You know what she was like? It was like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my I God. Probably is um, legendary. Yeah. So you get through. Yeah. 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 Legendary. That was a real example with that. Yes, it was real. Yeah, I like it. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but we also enjoyed your, your interview. Very yes. well done. Yeah. And Tito was, was great. He was yeah. great. I was talking all fast. I, c I couldn't get my words. I couldn't it's, get the words. It's fine.